Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Derp Your Hooves. Um, today we are going to be using the Garmin GTN 750 in the Cessna 414 Chancellor. Um, we're going to demonstrate how to do an ILS approach landing and this is the perfect plane to do it in. So I do have my um, LAX map. I was just showing that to you real quick. Because you want to know where you're going, you want to know the layout of the airport and the runways, so that when you're dealing with air traffic control, um, and they assign you a runway and you don't get to pick another one, you know exactly where it is. Otherwise, what's the point of using the ILS? So, you know, I just turned on the GTN 750 and I used a pre-programmed flight plan for this flight. Um, so I'm not punching it in manually. It's already in the GTN 750. Um, I can show you how to do a, a manual uh, <clears throat> flight plan on the Garmin GTN 750 in another video. So we are taking off from, again, from Catalina Island, and we're landing at Los Angeles International Airport. It's just a hop, skip, and a jump away. Um, closest thing I can do. And what I'm going to do here, too, is I'm going to let the autopilot um, fly the plane on approach for a while. And then, you know, I get kind of uncomfy when it's not following how I want the approach. So, you know, I turn the autopilot off, but I'm still using the ILS to um, get in there to LAX. So, you may have noticed that there's no sound in the video, and I have actually turned the sound off for the video because um, the engines for the Chancellor, the Cessna 414, are very, very loud. And even in the options menu, it's really, really hard to just get them to be soft enough so that I can talk over them but still hear them in the background. Um, maybe that's something they're working on. But so for this video, I just kind of disabled all the sounds. So all I'm doing right here um, is I'm just enabling the autopilot so I can go ahead and start setting up for the approach. But I just want the autopilot on and I want the plane flying in any direction right now, nice and level, without me having to keep my hands on the stick or the throttle. So when the GTN 750 tells me to set the course, um, you know, on my heading indicator, I just go ahead and I do it um, on the 414. It has it and, you know, it's telling me to do it. So, you know, I got a free moment. I'm just going to do it.
So with the GTN 750, you want to change it from the V-Lock or the v -Loc to GPS, and you just click that CDI button right there. Um, and that way, when you're doing your approach, um, the plane will actually fly on the approach and the crosshairs will line up properly. So I'm just going to have the plane fly on heading mode and that way it's going to fly on the heading towards LEX that we set that the GTN 750 asked us to program and that way we can start setting it up for the approach and just push the couple buttons we have to do on the GTN 750 to get it on approach. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to contact air traffic control in the sim and talk to the virtual air traffic controller um, selecting Los Angeles International Airport. And then they're going to tell us um, that we can land on runway 7 left. So we're going to acknowledge that, that we're landing on 7 left. And then I'm just going to bring up the runway map real quick, the whole layout map of LAX, just so I can show you where 7 left is so that when you know all the runways, there's you know, four runways and you can, you know, land in two different directions, which actually makes it eight runways. Um, it makes it less confusing when you're coming in and you're like, I don't know which runway to land on. I mean, seven left or six right or, you know, and this way you always pick the right one way. It's always good to cross reference it, um, even though it's just a sim. Um, that way you know you're landing on the right runway. Um, again, I'm going to say um, airports like Denver. It's great if you're ever flying into Denver to know what runway you're landing on. And it's also important that when we're going to set up approach mode that we select the right uh, runway. So we're going to start setting up the uh, GTN 750 for the approach mode. And what we want to do is we want to click the procedures button right there. And we want to select approach and the airport we want to land at. And then we click approach and then our runway was seven left. So ILS seven left and we click that. Right. Was it seven left? That's right, it was seven left, see? So just double check it before you set it. So seven left, and that it's showing us the approach right there from the ocean into seven left, and you say load and activate approach, and there it is. So now you go ahead and you push the approach mode button, and the plane is actually gonna start flying the approach. It's going to go off of the heading mode that we had set it on and it's actually going to follow that pink line and it's going to fly the approach all on its own. Um, and you're going to notice here um, that, I like again, like I said, I turned it off at one point um, after it turns just because um, I'm one of the people that I think sometimes the autopilot is trying to kill us. So, you know... Um, I like to take control and I'll use the uh, crosshairs to land it, but I'd rather land it myself even if the plane can land itself. I'm more comfortable manually landing it.
So the plane's pretty much flying itself. I mean, I stiff hand flew it a little bit. I call it stick flying um, on takeoff. And like I said, I'm going to turn it off. I'm going to turn off the autopilot on approach at one point and manually fly it in. But on the attitude indicator, and I want you to pay attention at when we start landing soon, you know, in a little bit. I mean, I activated the approach a little early um, just so I could show you guys how all this is done. Um, normally, you wouldn't have to activate it this early. It's up to you. Um, but I'm going to say again, so on the attitude indicator, you're going to see after we turn and we start um, on our kind of like our glide slope approach, um, you'll see that the crosshairs line up and the plane is flying the right approach. It's following the GTN 750's approach into 7 left. Um, and again, I turn it off and then as long as you follow those crosshairs, um, then you're perfectly on your glide slope and you kind of just have to manage your own speed. Um, to come in so you don't bounce, you don't crash, you don't stall. But I mean, this really is one of the easiest ways to land the plane. Um, it's great if it's, you know, you're using real weather and it's foggy, um, you can't see the runway. And again, that's why you want to know what the altitude and everything of the airport is um, because not everything's at sea level. Um, so again, you know, even though it's just a sim, if you're going to go flying around, um, don't get upset if you didn't research um, what the elevation of the arrival airport is. And it also tells you in the GTN 750 if you select the airport um, just in the autopilot mode. Um, you know, when you're doing your basic autopilot from A to B or whatever your waypoints are. If you look at your destination airport, it tells you what the elevation of the airport is. Um, so you really don't need a map, but I, again, you know, I like having the map. Um, and I like looking at the map a little bit, either before the flight or during the flight. So that way, you know, I don't end up um, part of the runway.
So now we're on final approach and we're going to be using runway 7 left and so when we double check the map 7 left and 7 right are on the right hand half of the airport or the southern part of the airport and on the northern part of the airport are two runways we don't care what they are we're not going to be using them so we're going to be using the runways on the southern part and we're going to be using 7 left which is obviously going to be on the left-hand side of the southern part of the airport, not 7 right, which is also going to be on the south part of the airport, but it's going to be to the right-hand side. So if we were to split the airport right down the middle, we have two runways. I forget what the numbers are. I think they're 6 or something or 4. I don't remember what they are. Um, but they're going to be on the left-hand side of the airport. We're using the runways on the right-hand side or the south side of the airport. And again, I'm going to turn off the autopilot and I'm just going to use the crosshairs to manually land the plane on the glide slope. And this is easier using the ILS glide slope than it is picking your own. So, I mean, this is just a great advantage, especially if you have like zero visibility or next to no visibility. Um, as long as you know the elevation of the airport and you're following the glide slope, you have a better chance of not becoming part of the runway.
And so just like that, here we are landing on seven left. Um, I just followed the crosshairs in. I followed the ILS approach the best I could. And it just makes it much easier to land. So that's really it. Um, I won't let the autopilot of the GTN 750 land the plane for me. Just me. I'd rather manually land it just using the ILS approach. And it's just that simple to go ahead and set the GTN 750. And this is the free version. Um, I haven't paid for a subscription. You can do it in the free GTN 750. So I also wanted to say, you may have noticed that we have a different mascot for Derp Your Hooves. Um, I love Derpy. Don't get me wrong. You know, Derpy Hooves is great. And this is Derp Your Hooves. There's a difference. Um, and, you know, we're still going to have Derpy Bolts. And the Derpy Bolts are better than the Wonder Bolts. And if you don't know who the Wonder Bolts are, well, then I've got a show for you to watch. Um... Anyhow, so the Derpy Bolts might even be better than the Thunderbirds, the Blue Angels. I'm not sure, but we'll see. And I'll tell you more about if you're interested in becoming a Derpy Bolt, how you can become a Derpy Bolt. I also wanted to say that we are now also streaming live um, on Twitch. And for right now, it's going to be every Thursday at 8.30 p.m. Um, Pacific Daytime and Pacific Standard Time, um, you know, depending on Daylight Savings. Um, and you guys are more than welcome to join us. I'm going to post the flight plans in the Discord server and give you guys a heads up um, to let you know when we're going to be doing flights. Um, you're going to be able to see it on our Derp Your Hooves Facebook page as well. There's going to be all these links leading you to the Discord server and leading you to Twitch. I'm still going to be here on YouTube and doing videos, instructional videos, and doing some fun flights. Um, but if you want to get in on some of the live streaming and some of the live events where we're going to fly for usually an hour, maybe a couple hours, three hours, depending on the flight, you're always more than welcome to join us. And I can get you that information. I'll be posting it on the Facebook page. I'll be posting it in the Discord server and everywhere else I can. So remember, right now it's going to be Thursdays at... 8.30 p.m. Pacific Daytime, and when Daylight Savings Time is over, it's going to be Pacific Standard Time. Um, you're more than welcome to fly with us, and I'll give you all the information. We're going to be on the West USA server, unless I change that. And again, guys, thanks for watching Derp Your Hooves. Feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the skies.